Hello! Today we'll be checking out what's in this exciting little box and brace yourself because there's nothing to do with FPV. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe and if you can find a little bell icon, well click on it, what the hell, it might do something. So yeah, it's not FPV. Uh, a little while ago you may have remembered that I did this little smart car thing. It's Arduino based, all sort of standard sensors built together and uh, the code in it was really quite nice and you can expand it with your own programming you can do a certain amount of um, visual programming on your phone I thought it was really nice actually um, and along has come a second kit called the Albot a slightly simpler thing where this had um, four wheels to drive this is the sort of more a simple based driven thing so two wheels and a sort of uh, trike type wheel at the front to just sort of turn around stuff but got all, all the regular stuff uh, does the line tracking does obstacle avoidance you've got a programming interface and it looked like they tidied up the app a bit so they asked me if I wanted to take a look and I said absolutely because it was great fun to build this kit and I was pretty impressed with a the instructions b the fact that the Arduino was all sort of they had the open source code published and it was very easy to go ahead and do your own things and I even did a little change here so yeah let's check this out and see what's happening now as you can see it's chock-a-bock full of stuff it's got loads of little boxes and that's got lots of components in so let's get straight into close-up we'll go through them see what we've got and we'll put it all together okay let's dig inside and see what the Albot consists of well first thing you do notice is we got this big old unfoldable thing which has obviously got some lines on so you can do the line reading thing I think we'd better look at that when we've got a, a wider camera angle uh, then we've got a bunch of little boxes so let's take these out so we can get rid of the main box oh there are this many so this one tells me we have the car body USB cable RG25s lithium battery screwdriver ultrasonic sensors line tracker module uh, dot matrix module Ties, universal wheel, screw package, expression panel, and the control board and motors. Let's have a quick look in the boxes and see if they're nicely sort of labelled in their bags, which they were certainly were last time. It is normal that the motor digs out a little oil. There you go. Some motors. Uh, that looks like the control board, yeah. Oh, I say the individual bits aren't. Um, labelled. The ones with little bits in like screws are. What I might do is just keep them loose inside the boxes so I know what's what's in what box, although they seem fairly easy to identify what's what. Oh look at that. It's, um, well there's not much in this one, I'll take this out. It's like a single piece of aluminium. That's gorgeous the colour on that one isn't it? And that's the battery. So that, that's a fairly easy box, we'll get rid of that box. And normally the little modules are pretty easy to see what's what. Yeah, I think we can tell what's what, so let's just get it all out. Now, I was just about to start complaining that what we don't seem to have is a manual in this, and last time we had a really nice manual. But I was just looking at this big sheet, and if I unfold that completely and look at the other side, it's the instructions. Although I can't easily show them what's there, what I'll do is I'll film those instructions later so you can see what it looks like. But meantime, I'm going to get on with putting this together and see how easy it is to uh, construct. Stage one done, motors installed. I like this little attention to detail. If you look at this, it tells you what's in there and it even tells you you've got one for spare. Sometimes you put something together, you've got stuff left over and you feel a little bit worried. It tells you. Anyway, on to stage three. Okay, stage three, we're mounting the battery box, making sure to push that wire through, and even a little fiddly bit is getting that screw in just because it's, you can't hold it on, but the supplied little Phillips screwdriver is slightly magnetic, so that was okay. Okay, stage four is done, tyres are on. Only thing I didn't like about this is they use a self-tapping screw, and that means you have to obviously screw it at a certain amount of force in order for it to tap. I uh, just don't know if that's friendly for kids as much, but uh, it wasn't too bad, it went in pretty easy. Stage five, we've installed the line tracking module and the universal wheel, so it looks a little bit more like a bot now. We can sort of stand up, and that wheel's just gonna sort of pivot around as the other two drive it. 
part six is installing the LED module. There's actually quite a lot of LEDs there and we've got this little sort of diffuser in front of it called the expression panel. And it's quite friendly. They use these little uh, RJ25 connectors. So there's no sort of special wiring to do there. It just hooks in and um, yeah, screws in like so. And in step seven, we've installed the ultrasonic sensor, which gives it the outlook. And that uses that other RJ25 there, nice and simple. And uh, obviously we'll be connecting these up to the control board at some point. So we've done steps eight and nine together as stage eight was just installing the standoffs. Stage nine is bringing through the correct wires through these holes and also installing the last of those little RJ25s for the line sensor. Okay, so part 10, we're connecting up the control board a good time before we connect it to actually double check our wiring. And we've also got two ports unused here. We've got two servo uh, points there which don't get used. Uh, the other bits do, and they're handily numbered so you can see which bit goes to where. So next thing to do is actually fix this in. Make sure that wiring's sort of nicely out of the way everywhere. So there you go, that's the control board screwed down, which is option 11, and what I've done is just tucked the wire out of the way there so it wouldn't get in the way. And that is it done. Um, there's some juice in there, so if we turn it on, it sort of lights up and stuff, and we get some eyes at the front, which is all very cute. But I'll go and actually charge up that battery fully, and then we can see what it does in uh, all the bits. It's got um, a reset here, a, a B slash U switch, I don't know what that is mode button and there's our charge it's got a bluetooth adapter in there for if we want to push a program into it so yeah we've got some opportunities anyway i'll get this charged and we'll check it out in more detail okay here we are down in the kitchen to see what this guy does let's turn him on first you need to make sure that it's nice and flat and still when you actually turn it on because it does a load of uh, little calibration stuff but um, as soon as you do that you'll notice this main led sort of flashes well, a sort of phase between the various things. And if you have a look at the front, you'll see these little eyes go through various expressions. So this is basically a, a standby mode, which he just sort of sits in there. And then you've got, at the back here, you've got the B slash U. So B is Bluetooth, U is upload. So if you're uploading a computer, flick it to U. B is used for the phone app. And then you've got this mode button here. So when we press that, it goes to green first, and that's line tracking mode. It goes to yellow, which is object tracking mode, and if you press it again, it goes back to standby. So uh, let's test that out. So let's put it into line tracking mode. If I press the mode button once, it's off following the line. It's kind of moving the paper around. Not a bad idea to have this secured down with something. Yeah, doing a pretty good job there, isn't it? Obviously, aside from the sheet of paper, if you've got some black tape, you can just lay that out in whatever way you want and do it that way. Let's see if we can grab hold of him again as he comes around. Right, so we've put it into yellow, and this is line tracking mode. Helpfully enough, it knows when it's off the floor, so it won't go. So what I'm gonna do is just set it going and see what happens. Maybe we should have had a camera I can actually move. Now there is a, a little bit of a, a weakness here on object detection because the sonic thing only goes in one direction. The last little smart car I had had a sort of, sort of little servo that would move that ultrasonic sensor around and that was much better to decide what was happening. You see here it can get certain angles where it gets stuck but it, it mainly manages to find its way out again eventually. But it's just one thing to be aware of. And those are the functions of just using that. But I think what more people will want to use is this. This is the little uh, Eligu app for Albot. And all we need to do is connect that via Bluetooth. Um, basically, we've got this rocker switch so if I place this where I can see both we can move around like that 
we can put it, we can change things like the, um, the eyes if we want to. We've got some preloaded ones here. We can say, okay, let's have those eyes. Or we can indeed go in and uh, do our own eyes if we want to. It's just a random pattern there. <laughs> I'm looking through ugh, my uh, viewfinder. We've got things like a music player. Bit Christmassy, but you know. Um, and these sort of things are stuff you can do in the little programming stuff. We've got this, um, the little light bulb symbol will give you an opportunity to change this light here. So if we set this to a color, we can go sort of red. We can move those colors around, blue, green, you know, do a mix of whatever we want. And that's just that color in there. Um, and then this one here is a draw a line and you should sort of do that. So if we start here, it seems to want to have the phone held this way and we say start it and then say let's go forward go right come back to the start so it doesn't really know quite where it's going other than the sort of the direction if you like but there's another thing it's got uh, and in here as well, we can put it into obstacle avoidance or line drawing mode. We've got this thing here, which is the uh, how sensitive the sensor is. Specifically, that's the line sensor. Of course, mo most people will probably want to just drive it around with the sort of the rocker and have some fun with that. And you'll notice the little expressions change all the time as it's going, which is quite good fun. But there are some other things in the app as well. We got the programming. And this is very similar to Scratch for anybody who uh, has used that or has kids that use that where it's got a bunch of little blocks that you, you can choose and you can sort of attach them like that. So I very quickly um, just chucked one in there and I just wanted it to say my name, which looks like this. As you can see, there's a thing to make a little picture. So if I was to run that one it doesn't move around or anything it just spells out my name which is a bit pointless but uh, yeah it's not bad it's fairly basic the stuff you can do in there but you can do plenty of you know driving around a certain amount of time and then turning so you can certainly get your way around stuff like that and then you have this thing called DIY control, which is where you come to the adding extra stuff to the Arduino interface that you can put in here and then control that way. So that is the basis of what the basic functions are for this. So you will notice these little ridged dots there. The what they are is little Lego sized compatible things. So you can put Lego on there. And this isn't just a case of, you know, giving this little skeleton guy a ride. This is more about the expandability and this is where things get really quite interesting and this is where this can turn from just a simple little toy that you've built and can move around with your phone into something where you know you learn embedded programming essentially so let's get back to the computer and i'll show you exactly what elegoo give you if you want to take this a level further and learn more about how to program it to do different things and how you'd really sort of think about moving this away from just a robot and doing other things with it so as mentioned, the little USB thing here is for charging or you can upload programs directly to the Arduino. And this is where Eligoo's range of learning materials and basic software is really quite impressive. So there are a couple of things you can do. You can download the big zip files um, and this contains lots of example codes and the base code on the Arduino. And if you look at the main function on the Arduino. It's quite a lot of code there. Um, and it's, that's not something you just jump straight into as a beginner and say, oh, I can do this. And slightly unhelpfully, some of the comments are in Chinese, which may not be as useful. Uh, there's plenty of comments in English as well. I don't know why some of them are in Chinese, who knows. So the good news is that in that package of stuff, 
they split it down into several lessons as well where you get a pretty well produced PDF document explaining everything, explaining the hardware design, how it all fits together, some of the ICs there and how the programming then works in the examples and then you get the example code you can test and you can sort of move forward and experiment with that. Again this is not um, particular beginner stuff but it's certainly enough to get you going. The good thing about this being an Arduino is you could also just understand Arduino code basically if you go through the many many millions of tutorials that are available. Anyway aside from working through some of the examples and lessons they've got there which are very well produced very well written and if you screw everything up it's got the original code there and so you can just reload it should you sort of go wrong yourself. There's the, you know there's no possibility you can destroy the code because you can just reload it on the Arduino that's good. Also on their website there are a bunch of examples about uh, other little projects you could do with this. Now some of which are sort of they use the, the base of this and they attach uh, bits of Lego to it which is why well, this is useful and so one one thing here was as a sort of footballer using uh, the Lego to produce something to catch the ball in and be able to produce that forward but I tend to think the more interesting ones is where it goes beyond what's in the kit and they do completely different things so uh, and they do one where they can use this as a drinks dispenser or use this as a sweets dispenser using some of the stuff here and some extra stuff and of course we've got these extra ports that we can utilise in those. So they're not super beginner friendly, it gives you a real path to get into the programming there, understand what's going on and the fact it's kind of a fun design gives you a sort of way into experiment, you know, just about driving around and doing different things to the code uh, before you go on and, and start doing things like, like let's remove this from the wheels and let's use different sensors to do different things and perhaps add sensors to it. So there's a whole raft of things you can do with it, which is fun. So yeah, overall a lovely little kit. It went together very quickly, even though I was like, you know, filming bits in between and stuff. Um, absolutely no hassle. The inclusion of the Lego bricks here I think are really useful, especially if this is going to sort of uh, children which will all have Lego kit. I've still got Lego kits places so I can put it on and sort of expand this if I want to. It's a good little learning kit. I'd say the only thing is you need to be properly keen to get into it. If you're coming into this without any programming experience then you can do the sort of the pull down scratch type stuff and hopefully that will push you forward into the Arduino IDE which is a, a lot more complicated but you can start slow and build up towards it. What you can't really do is just jump straight into that code if you've got no experience at all to get going, but a really good excuse to get into it. Anyway, this has been the Eligu Albot, which was kindly supplied by Eligu, and of course if you want to check it out in more detail, you'll find links below. Well, I hope that review has been helpful, and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.